Good morning, people. Watch them at 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. Grace is something we didn't earn, and grace is something we don't deserve. It is grace that God gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life that's how we're saved that's how we're kept saved once you come to the end of yourself and admit you're a sinner in need of a savior and it's only one and that's jesus christ put your faith and trust in christ and what he did for you at the cross you're justified by the blood of jesus the Holy Spirit will indwell in you, and the Holy Spirit will seal you until the day of redemption, which means you can't lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will also change you. He will be your best friend. He will lead you, guide you, and he will um, comfort you. Period. That's the gospel. No, you will not lose your salvation once you accept Christ as Savior. I got to give you this article. Um, it's... I was kind of waiting for this. I, you know, I, I didn't know what the U.S. was going to do, if they're going to do anything. There's so much news going on. I'm hearing also locally, locally, I mean in the States, um, police union boss in California is telling people to stay away from California because it's, it has become... They said a third world utopia. And they're telling tourists to stay away from California. As uh, L.A. Uh, police boss, union boss, is warning tourists to stay away as city descends into third world dystopia. Folks, this, this, is, <laughs> this is bad. And then I'm listening to The Blaze this morning. And you know who came in. Did you hear the meow? I'm listening to the blaze this morning, and um, a truck driver called in. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> a truck driver called in, and he said... That he's hearing that some of the truckers, this is, if you live in a snow belt, <laughs> like Ohio and other areas, they're not going to plow. They're going to have a hard time getting people to plow the streets. That's not good at all. So I'm hearing all this stuff going on. And then I'm looking at this thing right here from a Jerusalem Post. U.S. Space Force holds a war game. I don't know why they call it. I, I have no idea why they call it uh, war games, exercises. I, I, you know what? To me, it's not a war game. It really isn't. But they're holding the t uh, war game to test satellite networks under attack. The U.S. is nervous. Especially after hearing what Iran's going to do. The training exercise involved an uh, adversarial group working to simulate an aggressor nation with space capabilities like, mm, let me see, Russia, China, a hmm, few other rogue nations. The United States is testing satellite uh, res resiliency to threats from China and Russia miles above the Earth's surface just weeks after Russia shot down an aging communication satellite. I knew the U.S. was going to try to do something because we, we, they know what's going to happen. If they wipe out the satellites, that means communication is going to be cut in half. Not only for the military, but for everybody else. The, uh, the computer-aided simulations included potential shooting down of U.S. missile tracking satellites. How do you think they track people? 
is through satellites. Satellite jamming and other electronic warfare effects that are possible tactics in space warfare. Actual satellites are not used, but they're simulating this. My thing is this. Why, in God's name, would you advertise this? Why would you even let it be known? Why are you telling your enemies, basically, by advertising this, you're saying you're scared? During a visit to the Schreiber Space Force Base in Colorado, Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks saw the space flag simulated space training exercise hosted by U.S. forces. It was the 13th such exercise and the third to involve partners such as Britain, uh, Canada, and Australia. Pentagon leaders are touring U.S. bases this week while the dopey regime draft 2023 budget takes shape. The deputy, uh, the Department of Defense hopes to move budget dollars toward a military that can deter China and Russia. Well, by, by the time they do this, it's going to be too late. Does anybody have a brain in Washington at all or no? No, it's just... No, they believe that, no, this can't happen. This is not going to happen right now. We have, we have time to get things together. Let me explain something to you. For those of you who don't understand what first strike is, first strike. When the United States talks about first, first strike, like what I, the articles I gave you about a nuclear first strike, that is actually a declaration of war. That is actually a threat to the other nation saying that we will hit you with our nuclear weapons first before you can come after us. So to move the budget toward a military that can deter China and Russia, I'm sorry, it's a little late in the game for that right now. After Russia successfully conducted an anti-satellite missile test last month, U.S. officials believe there is an increasing need to make the U.S. satellite network resilient to attack and use opportunities like space flag to train. Hmm. Really? Satellites are vital to military communication, global positioning, navigation, and timing systems. And if anybody writes me and comments and says there's no such thing as space, Please, give me a break, okay? Don't, don't be ridiculous. Because if that's the case, you wouldn't be traced and tracked. There's tracking systems for that. How do you think they're navigated? Think about it, please, before you comment. A 10-day-long space war game attempts to simulate a cutting edge of U.S. capability in space. I'm going to link this article in the description box. Folks, if you don't look at, let me, how can I put this? If you can't see the time that we're in right now, this is what makes this time so much more dangerous than years ago. You can't sit there and say, oh, they've been doing this for years. They've been doing that for years. We didn't have the technology we had years ago compared to what we have now. This stuff is real and they're going to use it. The United States is a sitting duck right now because they have a because of this weak regime that's in office. And I've said it before, they're going to take full advantage of it. I'm going to link this in the description box. I'm going to link the article about uh, California in the description box, too. Anytime a, a police department is telling people to stay away, things are have gone from bad to worse. And there's no law. And that's about what it's like right now throughout the entire United States. I do believe they cannot get the satellite. They might can get it to somewhat 
up to par? I don't know. I don't know. But by the time they talk about what they're doing, they have to move a budget in order to pay for all this um, and train people. By the time they do all that, <laughs> it's a little too late. It's going to be a little too late. Um, I'll link this in the description box. If anything else comes up, I will be back with the next video. Um, in the meantime, I thank you for your prayers and support. And I pray for you guys too every day. And I will be back with the next video. Thank you.